Let's waste zero time because you already know what the sneaker is, but let's finally unbox the brand new Air Jordan 1 High patent bred in a GSI 6.5. All too often, a GS size doesn't live up to a men's size for an Air Jordan 1, but not this time around. Jordan brand did us justice with this pair. We have an all patent leather take on the iconic Air Jordan 1 high bread color blocking and color way. Now, whether we're talking about Peter Moore designing this for Jordan in 84, him wearing it even though the NBA said, hey, don't wear this, or him rocking it also during the dunk contest in 1985, Either way, this sneaker and the colorway stands the test of time. You guys saw a family stitch on the inner liner of the sneaker, and yes, there is also a red Jumpman hang tag, but outside of that, everything else is very reminiscent of the actual Air Jordan 1 bread. We have the red outsole, and the upper is comprised of red and black paneling across the entire upper of the sneaker itself. You have black laces that come within the shoe, but also an additional set of red laces. In terms of sizing for any Air Jordan 1 high or low, I always go up a half size. That's just personally based on the fit of the sneaker on my foot, especially because it feels narrow in the forefoot area. However, I'm sure many go true to size or they might go up a half size just because this is patent leather. Regardless of the upper being comprised of all patent leather, it still feels the same as any other six and a half would on my foot for an Air Jordan 1 silhouette. What's going on everybody? It's your girl TJ back. Another video talks with TJ, aka TJ2 Swoosh T Yeezy, MA2 TJ T Essentials, and the final purchase of 2021 is here to my possession. That patent bread. And I'm beyond excited to have it. Now, I'm no stranger to having bread pairs, okay? And the only Air Jordan 1 high bread sneaker I have in my collection prior to this patent bread one is the Flyknit pair. And that, that, that pair just goes under the radar. It's not respected for what it is. The leather insole, the comfort, the breathability. It's an amazing shoe. And I'm glad Jordan Brand released the Flyknit, uh, I guess, line for the shadow, the bread, and then the royal. I only have bread, but I also have other bread colorways of as well. I'm within other silhouettes, right? So you have the Air Jordan 1 Low, which I picked up off eBay because eBay is bay. I have the Bread 11, of course, and I worked that release and it was wild at Kids Foot Locker. And then I also have the Air Jordan 4 Bread, which can also be thought of as the black cement pair. Um, so, why not add this to the collection? Well, as you guys already know, as I said in the other video, I don't have the 2016 pair. Really, really wanted it, don't have it. So now that I have this in the collection, it feels almost right. Now again, in terms of panicking uh, to rush out and just get the sneaker immediately, like right now and pay resale, I don't know that that's the move you have to make right now. Uh, now I also say that having my pair for retail, so I truly understand that you may think, hey, easy for you to say, I still need the shoe. However, if late shipments are coming in and restocks happen, if you can get it for retail, I would always want you to get it for retail. However, if you got the money available, you wanna just pay the resale right now so you secure it. Not mad at that uh, at all. And I am curious though, what is your take though on Air Jordan 1 uh, highs? We've seen a lot of them coming out. Which one catches your eye the most? Well, listen, you go ahead and think about that question of which Air Jordan 1 in 2022 you're most looking forward to, and we can go over the three ways I choose to style the Air Jordan 1 high patent bread. Now I say three ways, you will see four looks here, but one is a play off of the exact same look. And yes, a few of these are Kanye inspired from the old Kanye when he still wore a lot of Jordan retros. 
Kanye kept it classic back then with a distressed pair of denim and a good fitting white t-shirt, something we could all use in our closets even today. So what you're seeing here is a play from that outfit but just with different silhouettes, one being looser and more relaxed on the left, and one being a little bit more fitted and draped on the right. On the right, I'm wearing a slouchy long fit white tee. I wear this quite often from H&M, and then super distressed super X denim from American Eagle. The more relaxed look on the left features the Jordan Women's Boxy Essentials t-shirt in white in a size medium and then PacSun Distressed Boyfriend Denim Jeans in the light wash and finally a Jordan brand hoodie that has the Wings logo on the front. I guess these are both a little bit of a play off of Kanye's outfit, again, for the Air Jordan 1 bread. So on the left, I'm actually wearing the lilac blonde cropped long sleeve black top, the brand new puffer coat that Jordan brand sent me as a gift, and then Jordan brand cargos in the olive green colorway, plus a Jordan brand hat in red. The look on the right is a more direct iteration of what Kanye wore featured in the picture in the middle. So you have Zara leather leggings that are rather fitted and they also unzip at the bottom to fall just over the top of the sneaker. I'm also wearing the Jordan brand vintage t-shirt that does have an oversized fit and yes it is for women in a size medium. And then finally the roused sleeve blazer that I picked up from H&M a few years ago. The fit on the right is something that could be more business casual where you're still comfortable going out with the t-shirt and sneakers, but it is a little bit more elevated than throwing on a puffer coat and cargo pants. Personally, I appreciated Kanye's style back in his Jordan retro days, whether it was a chambray shirt and black denim or even leather pants, I think it all worked really well together in a classic way. So please be sure to sound off which outfit was your favorite for the patent bread. All right, you guys know the drill here. Go ahead and comment below which look was your favorite, but also keep in mind, I said how I choose to style the patent bread. It may not be how you would wear it or how you would style it, and that is perfectly okay. Um, when I show the styling portions of videos, I never anticipate or intend for you to automatically think like this is how you should wear it. No, it's just my personal preference and style. It can be something you like, it can be something you absolutely hate that was never taken into account it's about what i would enjoy and i hope you guys dress the same way with styles that you really enjoy so um i really appreciate you guys tuning in giving me your feedback on that in terms of fit um definitely some listen a lot of jordan thrown into there but why not jordan brand doesn't only provide us um items that have tons of like graphics all over it no sometimes they're pretty subtle like the cargo pants which can be worked into your wardrobe as a staple so keep that in mind um foot locker will have quite a few styles from time to time so i would take a look there as well as as champs now again back to the discussion of why this was so sought after because yes it is a bread colorway so we know that holds weight in itself the same way honestly chicago um a chicago one or chicago color blocking can hold weight too but for this i think we can't ever shy away from the fact that it is a bread it's the traditional bread color blocking and when you have that on an air jordan one on a high more specifically you got to give it respect um, now, I know some don't like the fact that it's all patent leather. You just think, hey, maybe I can only wear that shoe on special occasions. I'm terrified of creasing. And some, I, I, I am curious to see how many people will wear the shoe. And I only say that because if it was just a regular all leather bread one, they'd wear it immediately, like all the time. It would be in their top five rotation, no matter what, for most of 2022. However, because it is patent leather, I am curious to see how many people really step out in that shoe on a consistent basis. I myself intend to wear this a lot, even when it's raining, okay? Especially when it's raining. Like if you have rain boots, they're patent leather. Newsflash, I intend to wear this in the rain and I'm excited to have it. Like there, I, I understand that Jordan 1s are becoming so saturated in the market. I don't see them slowing down the same way. I don't see Nike slowing down with the dunks. Like how many dunks are already supposed to release in the month of January? 
a lot just to give you an idea and i think that will continue throughout the year now i have my eye on a few dunks moving into february but that relates to the the aged dunks like the vintage style dunks that they have for the navy and white pair and then more of that uh spartan green and white pair because we know i missed out on the spartan dunk low in 2021 so i intend to go after those but other than that i think it is smart to be a little bit more choosy about some of the air jordan ones that you go after not only for your peace of mind because you'll be chasing a lot of releases but think about how much you'll often you how often you'll actually wear the shoe i just think that's a question we should ask ourselves a lot in 2022 but please sound off if you got a w or if you're patiently waiting for your w based on a restock maybe based on a late shipment coming in um if you're not subscribed and you like what you see go ahead hit the subscribe button hit the like i really appreciate it this is one of the most amazing pairs to have dropped in 2021 right at the tail end and couldn't be happier to have it and as always act your age not your shoe size peace